They said it was impossible to go down $3,000 and then still finish the day green, but I did it. A red to green move, I did the impossible, and I finished the day up a thousand bucks. So I started with a big red trade, which is a terrible way to start, no, nobody likes that, but it's what happened today, and I was down about $3,000, and because I did that one trade with big share size, I felt like I had to then reduce share size to start digging myself out. The reason I don't want to increase share size as the losses uh, get bigger is because then if I take a second loss or a third loss in a row, I'll end up you know, doubling or tripling how red I am on the day. So I started chipping away with small share size, 200 here, 300 here, 400 here, small trades, digging myself out. So I was down then 2,800, then 27, then 2,200, then 19, then 14, then 11, then 800, then 500, then 300, then 200, and then I was up 100, and then I was up 300, and then 800, and then 1,500, and I finished up just about $1,100. Not bad. Uh, I really am pretty impressed with that red to green move. Uh, today was not easy for me despite having a few stocks that are up quite a bit. Um, it, it felt, it, it just didn't feel like a very easy day. So that's the way it is sometimes, but um, an interesting recap and a trade on TVIX today, which is a little unusual trading TVIX long as the market was dropping for about $900 of profit. So as always, questions, comments, leave them below and I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. All right, everyone, so we're gonna do our um, midday market recap today. Um, this was a, a little bit of a choppy day, although I will say that we've seen some, um, some nice follow through a little later in the morning. Specs, SPEX right now up 218% with a high of day of 36, and it just broke there to 3840. I'm actually down $800 on it. Uh, disappointing. I was down three grand on it from a 10,000 share position coming out of this first halt right here. I bought for the break of two and then stopped out down here when it failed. And I took big size, I stepped up to the plate, and I'm disappointed because it, you know, immediately put me down uh, almost 3,000 on that stock. Uh, I was able to make my way back up to green, trading these pullbacks through here, but I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable taking uh, 10, 12,000 share positions. So my 2,000, 4,000 share trades, I made back um, most of what I lost, but uh, I, I just kind of did it slowly. The problem for me was that I just didn't feel comfortable taking really big share size. Um, after having those initial losses. And now as I'm watching it, oh, feeling FOMO, because it's obviously um, moving higher here. So let me look at the daily chart for the next daily resistance. Let's see, so we've got left and up. So we've got 72, we've got um, 82, and then 96. So, you know, I start to wonder where is this going to top out? Volume is still increasing. This is great to see. The high there was 69. So typically, uh, I would be taking a trade for the break of 69. We do have 11 million shares of volume. Trading these um, you know, micro pullbacks at this area past 11, you're going to have a higher likelihood of false breakouts. Uh, $4, if it broke that level, would certainly be nice to see. But uh, in any case, 250% gain is awesome. So great to see that action. Um, I just kind of botched my first trade on it thinking it would go right away and it didn't really open up until uh, after it broke through this level. But I got in, as soon as it broke through the high, I was back in and looking for that squeeze. But again here, it kind of, you look at three dojis in a row. It sort of, you know, it did squeeze, but then this was a little bit cleaner right through here. Uh, but even this, um, when you look at the one minute chart, wasn't without a couple of kind of dramatic false breakouts uh, right here and right here. 
So generally, a little bit of a tricky stock uh, to trade, and I'm, I'm red on it, down 850 bucks. AEY is the second stock I'm red on. This one was a continuation setup, looking for the break of yesterday's uh, high and the pre-market action here of six. So it broke six, as you can see, but uh, I got in uh, right up in this area, thinking it was gonna just continue to squeeze through 650 and up to 675. I then held through this pullback down here to six, it bounced up, did an ABCD pattern, and I ended up stopping out right uh, here as it broke this level. So that was a little disappointing. Uh, that put me down a thousand as well. Um, but I, of course, had some green trades. At my lowest today, I was down about $2,800, $2,800. So the fact that I'm up 1100 right now is a great turnaround. Um, and I do even have a trade on TVIX that I'll uh, share with you in a second. GNPX, uh, surprisingly, is the biggest winner today. This was uh, also a continuation setup, and I bought this nice pullback right here. That's very clean. Nice, clean pullback and a squeeze up to seven. Second day continuation is what we were looking for. So that was a nice, clean trade, pretty pretty relaxed. VVPR, another couple nice trades on this one. We got the break of VWAP, as you can see here. We got a pullback right there. That was the clean pullback. And that trade from 30 up to a high of 44, really clean. So that was a nice one. Uh, COCP was the leading gapper. V VVPR and COCP were our two leading gappers, and I am green on both of them, which is terrific. Uh, so I'm happy with that. But um, this one, my trade was right out of the gates. Uh, at Let's see, I bought right here uh, for the break of 40. It drops down to 215 and then rips up to 248, and I got out of it with $584, and I was like, that's it, I'm not touching that one again, because it was a close call. I was down, you know, 20 cents on it. It just flushed down, and then I was like, all right, well, let's give it a second. Let's see what it does. It rips back up, and um, I managed to walk away green, which was felt like a blessing. So that was COCP, and then TVIX. So TVIX, uh, I was trading because the S&P 500, of course, um, dropping. So the S&P 500 right now is hitting lows, TVIX is hitting highs. They have an inverse relationship. And I traded it on um, this break right here. No, sorry. Um, it was, let me go back. This is a nice one here. So let's pull up TVIX. So it's up at 68.50 and the SPY is going down. I traded it uh, right here. The first five minute candle to make a new low, this bear flag is where I got long TVIX, knowing that as the market dropped, TVIX would go up. So if we look at the TVIX chart, the entry was right here at 66.76, and the exit was on this move up to 68. So I made $800 on that trade. Um, I was felt pretty confident on it. Nothing crazy exciting, but um, just trying to capitalize a little bit on what's going on in the overall market. Uh, you know, we just have this big drop. The market now has uh, basically, I think it's going to be coming back down towards the 200, um, which, you know, typically has been a good support level, as you can see back here. So we might see the 200 is kind of right at, um, oops. Well, whatever. It's kind of right at that 307 level below this pullback here in December. So getting a little bit of a drop here on the coronavirus um, fears. The market was down quite a bit yesterday, but um, it gapped down and then was sort of not as easy to trade. Today, the market opened kind of up, up a slightly and then started to roll over. So this bear flag gave me a good uh, low risk entry. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so that's that's it. AEY, Specs, COCP, VVPR, TVIX, and GMPX. Uh, any day that I'm my second biggest green is on TVIX is definitely an indicator of um, the market we're in. It's a little unusual for me, but uh, it, it worked out today. And and Specs, 
looking back at this one, um, you know, this has got a high of 369. Again, increasing volume, which is nice. This is a pullback setup. It's a five minute pattern right now that's starting to form. I actually entered, I had an order ready to go in my TD Ameritrade platform for specs when it was back down, uh, where was this? It was like when it was down here at a dollar 70 or no, it was a dollar 50 before it squeezed into the halt at a dollar 73. And I was like, ah, I was like, you know what, Ross, you're red on the day in your main account. Don't trade in, in your small account. It's, this isn't the day clearly the tide and the, the momentum is, is going against you. I think I should just leave it, leave it alone. So I didn't take the trade at $1. fifty. It squeezes up to $1.73 at halt. Coming out of the halt, I was like, oh, I'll trade that in my big account, not the small account. That's a little riskier, and that's a good thing because I lost on it. Of course, I ended up coming back, but um, not, not an easy one. So good job for those of you guys who are green today. I, I overtraded. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I didn't hit my max loss, and... Um, I never had my daily goal. I still don't have my daily goal, so I didn't hit my trigger threshold to have to walk away. Yesterday, I finished the day up uh, right around nine nine thousand. Terrific day. Today, I don't have as much to show for the same hour and a half of trading, but I'm glad that I got myself out of the red and into the green. So. Feel good about that, and I'll live to trade another day. Be back at it tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow we see some better uh, momentum out of the gates. So I don't get uh, caught in a big washout and have to then spend the next hour digging myself out of the hole. That would be nice if I can avoid that for tomorrow. So anyways, that's it for me. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning. Bye, everyone. Hey, did you know every morning I go live to stream my pre-market watch list? Subscribe to the channel, press the alert button, and you'll get the notifications. And if you want to learn more about trading, check out the links in the description. And if you have questions, post them in the comments because I personally respond to every comment posted on my channel.